Hello stamping friends, this is Robin with Stamp with Dr. Robin. I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator in San Diego, California, where it's trying to be sunny today. We got really, really overcast and kind of drippy this morning and now the sun is starting to come out. So this is um, a special day for me because I'm Jewish and today is Yom Kippur, which is why I'm coming to you a little bit late. Yom Kippur is probably our pretty much holiest day of the year. And so I was in temple this morning until recently and thought I'd just pop on here and try to stay consistent and, and be on here with you guys. So thanks for uh, putting up with a different time for me today. And um, if I'm a little uh, fuzzy or incoherent, it's because on Yom Kippur, one of the things we do is fast. Um, so I haven't eaten anything since last night. And, um, you know, we do that to, to Yom Kippur is basically about atoning for our sins and where we went wrong and, you know, reflecting on what we can do better. So that's what's up for today. Um, what's up with Stampin' Up! is, um, I don't think there's much anything that's new from last week. I would say if you haven't gone on and um, the website and um, checked out what the new stuff is with the um, uh, online exclusives, please do it. They've got five beautiful new papers. I showed the three of them last week. Um, if you came to my open house this weekend, you got to see all five of them. Um, oh, the other thing that is new is um, there's new uh, products in the clearance rack where they're half off or more. Um, there are stamp sets. Hey, if you speak French, there's a bunch of stamp sets. A few in English also, some new embellishments, some new dyes. So go check it out. There's a lot of cool stuff there. Um, there's new kits. Again, the kits are only available or you can only look at them if you are online. There's even um, new supply items and branded merchandise that your um, demonstrator can help you with too. And um, there was something else I was gonna say. Clear. Oh, there are a lot of papers on back order now, um, and including Oh Holy Night, the Autumn Paper, um, just a lot of papers on back order. They're coming in um, in the next few weeks, starting, um, I think, beginning of October, some stuff coming in. But there are some things that have come back that were on back order. So if you were waiting to order, for instance, the glow in the dark paper, the star trinkets, there's a few other things that were on back order that are back now. Please don't wait. We're finding out that, you know, things are going in and out pretty darn quickly here. So you do want to get... Um, get to them if you can. Um, all right, so just trying to see if anybody is on here yet. Um, so don't see anybody yet, or any comments at least. So if you're here, say hi. I think somebody's here. Um, anyway, hi to whoever that is. So I'm going to put you down here so you can see what we're doing today. So we are making a Halloween card. And um, that was one of the things, I'm gonna put you maybe a little bit closer. Yeah, that's better. Um, that attracted me to this pick of the punch um, set is because there's a happy Halloween in here and there's a little face so that you can make your little jack-o'-lantern. And so I thought, this is, I love this, this set, that it's just so darn versatile. And we are making a fancy fold, or a fun fold, today, um, because I realized I don't really have Halloween paper. So make it up for it by having a fun fold. So this is actually called a joy fold, if you've ever, um, seen it around and I don't know who named it because it opens like that. Now, isn't that fun? I put a little pumpkin here up on a dimensional to kind of help keep it closed. You really don't have to have that. I mean, once it's been smushed, I guess, and going in the mail, it'll stay closed. But I just thought, hey, I've got pumpkins, let's do this. 
So let's, let's go ahead and make this card. Um, and I don't know if you're looking at this background too, going, where is that, that fun paper there? I don't recognize that paper. Well, that's because we made our own paper with this sketched plaid. Now, I have seen this um, done in, in different ways lately where you could obviously do it in any color on any color, but then you can also add some with, you know, using like one of our Stampin' Write markers and just adding some other little, you know, lines just to get some other different colors in there. And so that's, this is a great, what we call background stamp. It's one of these big, huge stamps that take an F block to work well. Somehow I got glitter in here. Don't know what that came, where that came from. Um, and I think I'm going to do my class in next month just using a lot of these big background stamps because I do think that they are lots of fun and really overlooked. This is in the um, annual catalog, right? The page right before it starts going into looking at colors and such. Um, so that's a, that's a fun, a fun thing that not everybody has noticed. So let's go ahead and make this card. The other thing I want to do, and I actually want you to see this, and I want to do this first, is notice these uh, pumpkin pie colored um, sequins, or rhinestones rather. And hopefully all of you know there are no pumpkin pie colored rhinestones around, but guess what? We have regular rhinestones and they can be colored, any color you want. So we are going to have, I'm gonna use the other side, that one just doesn't look so good. I'm going to color these first so that they get some time to dry. And you can color rhinestones or anything else that's white, like the pearls, etc., with either your blends or your Stampin' Write markers, and then you get whatever color you want them to be. So now we have some pumpkin pie rhinestones that we're just gonna put to the side here and hopefully not lose under everything else. I just wanted to do that first so that it could dry. All right, so let's make this card. So the first part of the card is the base and the base of this is, is, is black and the black is um, eight and a half by four and a quarter and it's scored at three and then we're just going to fold that over burnish it with our bone folder and then the other part is eight by three and we're going to score that at four and burnish that okay so this is the basic of our card open open now obviously we need to do a little work so I've got a couple of pumpkin pie pieces that are four by five and a quarter now I have found it easiest when I'm working with this big huge stamp to do a couple things one is to get something a little bit bigger than what you need and cut it down. Now we're gonna need this whole thing for the inside part, but the other one we're gonna cut down. Okay, and then the other thing, like I said, it takes this big, huge F block, and we're gonna ink it up really good with our black memento that I probably also need to re-ink, but Hopefully sitting here upside down has helped it enough. And you're going to want something underneath it because, as you can see, it is actually bigger. Let me make sure this is going to get be straight. It's actually bigger than the entire um, quarter sheet of paper. All right, so I'm gonna push it like this. But then it also is really helpful to just pick this up and push it some more. And 
I did it exactly opposite as how it was going to tell you. So we're going to have two ways to see how to do this. One is like that, which worked pretty well. The other way, whoa, dropping things, which works even better because then you don't have to worry about dropping this huge thing, which is kind of a little unwieldy. Whoops, missed that little corner there. This is actually probably the better way to do this. Um, and then push on it. Especially because I'm gonna want to see if the if I can get these to line up horizontally. And now we can actually compare which worked better. Not too different, although I did not get this on straight. And I also, because of the way I did it, didn't quite get them even. So I'm going to try to do is do one more and then we can see if any of them are kind of even with each other. Just so that the lines line up on this card, I obviously didn't make it easy on myself by choosing to do it this way. Miss that, miss that little corner again. I would say the line thing is definitely harder than some of these other ones, these other big block ones. All right, and I don't mind that it's not perfect on these, um, but let's see if any of these line up. That sort of lines up, doesn't it? So maybe we'll use these two because I think this is the one that didn't line up as well. So we'll use these two. And I think I'm going to do... Oh, see how this one looks kind of funky? So we'll do this maybe this way. I don't know if they're the same both ways. Yeah, I guess they are. So what we'll do is put this one on the inside of our card. Let's see how that's going to work. And then if we put this one in. We can put this one on the outside, but I think what I'm going to do is cut that like that. Uh, wait a minute, that's not right. There we go. And then we'll cut this one down. Okay, so let's do that. So this one is, um, both of these are five and a quarter by four. And then, see how these lines line up? I kind of like that. And then this one is, what is this, three inches? So we need to do two and three quarters on this one. So let's get our, our little cutter out here. Let me close this up for a minute before I get this all over myself. And we'll do two and three quarters inches. And as you can tell, I wasn't exactly straight here, but it's gonna have to do, right? Obviously that's something I need to practice with this one. But to me, the important thing is that it's lined up with the other one, so I kinda like that. Okay, so now we can stick this one in. Two, or we can Oh, 
I suppose we could stick this in and then we'll get ready and decorate it. Now what I want to do is I'm just trying to make it about the same distance here to here as it is from the up and the down. The harder thing is going to be putting it on straight since these lines aren't exactly straight. That looks pretty good. Okay, now let's make the part for the front. Okay, so first thing, nothing is actually getting, um, stamped on here. So we can put this down and then just start decorating. Let's move it over just a little. All right, so first thing I want to do, why does that look crooked, guys? I told you straight is not my forte. So first thing I want to do is get the, the boo in here. And the boo is made, whoops, with the, oh gosh, you can't see it now. Alphabet a la mode dies. So the alphabet a la mode dies have all the letters of the alphabet and numbers, so actually I took the zero and the, um, the O to make my boo, and it also has some things like an exclamation point. Um, for those of us English-speaking people, they have some kind of interesting letters that we don't have in our language, <laughs> but apparently they do in the other places where, where Stampin' Up! is. Uh, so let's put that back. I lose a letter. All right, so um, the other thing I wanted to show you with these letters is for you to notice, hopefully you can see, that they are popped up, and they're popped up using these amazing um, foam foam adhesive sheets. Now these come like this and I think they're four and a quarter squares. And what I like to do is figure out what I need and then cut it down. And so what I did was figure out how much I needed for all of these things on the black. Cut my little black piece and here's my little foam square. Exact same size as my piece of cardstock. And now, believe it or not, you can just stick all of these on here and they will go just fine through our um, cut and emboss machine, all of them together like this. Isn't that cool? All right, hopefully they will stay on here like they're supposed to and not move around since I didn't cut a bunch of extras. So let's get our machine in here. We have all of our little booze. I was so amazed that this actually worked the first time I did it that really it'll cut through all of this. Now, I have to tell you this time it did take going back and forth a couple times. So I'm gonna do that. And I think it was more because I got these little pieces of paper. I think I'm gonna move it just slightly. What I find is if things don't cut all the way through the first time, stuck on here a little bit, is to turn it and re-put it in, as opposed to just putting it back and forth going the same direction. That if you just turn it a little bit off and you can get those little areas that didn't get, you know, there's in the, there's like a roller in here 
and it, it has little areas where it's going to get more pressure on it. That, let me show you what I'm looking at. If you look at the back here, you can see that it's cut all the way through all of them. So they will just pop on out. And then you haven't, we haven't wasted anything. Let's pop. Pop some letters out. Sometimes the little center things come out first. Also, you can use your little take your pick tool with the pokey part. That'll help get out the the ones that aren't cooperating. Come on, little O. See what I mean by the O and the zero are basically the same, which is really nice so that you can do more. Now this is the tricky one. I'm gonna wait because there's a little teeny dot on there and I do not wanna screw that up. All right, and then, can you see that? It's just foam back here and has, and it's sticky on both sides, so now that this is sticky here. Let me just make sure I have it where I want it. Probably should have done that before, that'll work. I just thought, I just love these letters. I just love that they're, they're kind of very clean. You know, they're, they're a little harder to use if you want to pop them up than ones we had a few years ago because they're not as, as thick. So you can't really put dimensionals on here. That's why these foam strips are so nice. for me to tell if that's straight. Now there's this little teeny dot here. I don't even know if you can see it. And that's my dot on the bottom of my exclamation point. So, see that? <laughs> that's why I didn't want to push it out. I didn't want to lose that little dot. There we go. Now, all we need, oh, I'm just noticing that this is, I've made it backwards from what the other one is, but that's okay. Um, shoot, I'm going to make it work. All right, so next thing we're going to do is stamp some pumpkins. This is what happens when I'm backwards and such from you guys. All right, so we got some pumpkins to stamp and punch out yeah hi tammy hi megan all right so this is our uh, pick a punch uh what do we call it pumpkin builder and i want to show you a couple things about using that if you have things on all of these areas that you're going to punch out Sometimes it's really helpful to do this, which is take this, and I just made a template like this, and that can be really helpful if you wanna punch out a whole bunch of things at once. You just lay your template down on here, okay? And then you stamp through that. So we're gonna try it that way, and then I'll show you a different way to use it also. So you've got our um, pumpkin pie. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna stamp a pumpkin full strength, and we're gonna do it straight through that. And then we will go punch it out. And then this one we are going to stamp in here. This is the other, the smaller pumpkin here. And that one we are going to stamp off first. Well, wait a minute, that was weird. I don't know why sometimes they ink up a little 
different. I don't know if it's me or the ink or what. And we're just going to stamp that off. Nope, I didn't get all the ink up. Why am I not getting ink up there? That I'm not sure of. Might be time to just re-ink this. All right, lightly stamp it off. And then again, if you can get it in here. Did not do a good job with that. I'll show you the idea of it and then we'll get a new one for that because I did not do a good job with that other one. But the idea is if you stamp them well in there, you can cut out more than one thing at a time. So you can see I didn't stamp so well there. So we're going to do that one again. But I did with the first one. So we got one, we got one going here. So let's try doing that little one just by itself. Took me so long to get a good inked up one. I think it's my stamp pad. I just, it has areas where it has good ink and areas where it's just not inked up as well. Okay, so it's also going like this. So we need to turn it. There we go. And we actually need two of these. Let's get that one. So this is the other way that can be good to do it is just make a row of them like this, especially when you need more than one. And then you can just kind of move it through. And we're gonna do the same thing. Whoa along one of these edges here for the stems, but before we leave this, there's one more that we want to do. I don't know if you noticed along here. See this pumpkin right here? There's no pumpkin on here that's striped. Can you see that? But what I did is I took this paper this is called Texture 12 by 12 Shimmer Paper. And it comes in white and balmy blue and shaded spruce. And it's in the annual catalog. And you can see it has like a fine shimmer. It's almost like it's got coated with a bunch of Winka Stellar. And it's textured, it has those little lines. So I was actually just looking for something to make kind of just a different looking pumpkin. And when I stamped on here and realized that it makes little lines, is that not the cutest little thing? And then we'll just cut that one out too. Excuse me, not cut out, punch out. Is that amazing that it'll do that? Um, all right, so we need a couple with our little, let's get rid of this, happy Halloween on here. I'm not going to make it go too far because we are actually going to use that again. Excuse me, not our happy Halloween, our little jack-o'-lantern smiles. So this one and this one get some little jack-o'-lanterns in Memento. I think all my pads need a little juicing up. So these, you know, you could just use the same thing and not put the little jack-o'-lantern face on here and then you have something you could use for Thanksgiving or a thank you card in the fall. Cute, huh? All right, don't go too far, inks. All right, so next we just need, oh, that's what we need. 
is we need some stems and I'm gonna make some little stems in pecan pie. And again, they call this a builder punch because you're building a pumpkin. And you see this little, that's our little stem. And what you wanna do is you wanna hold it like you're gonna punch it to figure out things like this stem has this side that's a little wider. So you're gonna to wanna to punch like that. Excuse me, stamp like that. So we are gonna stamp several of these because we need three of them. And I think we'll get an extra one over here just in case we need that. And then we'll bring back in our little punch here. And hopefully these won't go too far away. And this is a way I really like punching these out. Um, it, and stamping them is in a little line like this and you can just get them all lined up. But you've just got to watch your punch and know which direction to put your stamp set. Might as well punch out that extra little one. And there are leaves, you know, these little leaves that you could do too. I just decided they looked a little spookier without leaves. So I think that's all we need. But this one, oh, I know what we need is something for the inside. Where's my little inside pieces? Things are falling everywhere, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to find my inside pieces. Or I may have just used my inside pieces to, there we go. Yep. I think this is, is this an inside piece? That's a little small. That's a little big. So what was this one? Two and three quarters. So this is supposed to be two two and three quarters by um, three and three quarters. And I think I'm gonna have to cut this down a little bit to be able to use it on the inside. All right, so there's our inside, there we go. So what we're gonna do to use it on the inside is we're gonna put our little, get our black back again. And remember I said, this is one of the things I liked about this stamp set, is it had the little Happy Halloween so that you could use it as, a, like I said, a Halloween or a Thanksgiving card or just a pretty fall card. And we'll get our pumpkin pie back. Has anyone ever had this happen before? This looks like this, right? So it should open here. This is not the opening. The opening's over here. So somebody at, at Stampin' Up wasn't watching where they were putting out all the little labels. All right, so let's give this another little baby pumpkin down here. Bring back my little foam pad. Always stamp with your little foam pad. Stamp this off again. I kind of like things stamped off when I'm doing them on an inside car of the card. Just because that way you could, you know, you. I don't have a lot of room here to write. I figured if you were sending a Halloween card to somebody, you really wouldn't be writing a whole lot. But um, if you need to, and it's really light like this, so stamped off, then it's easy just to write over, like I've written over flowers or whatever else is on the inside here. And that's really easy to do when it's, um, when it's stamped off like that. 
So let's put this on the inside. All right, now we decorate the outside. Now one thing that we do need is we do need this one to be in the corner here like this because that's going to anchor that down. Now remember, I said, ah, I kind of did this backwards from the other one, but we're going to make it work. So the first thing I want to do is put this one on because that one pretty much has a, a space he has to be in. But before I put him on, let's, he needs a little, um, a little stem, right? In fact, I think what I'll do is put little stems on on all these guys that need them. Oh, remember I said I thought I was doing an extra? I'm not. We do actually do have four, four pumpkins that need their stems. Another good reason to, to do some extras. And you can stick either side up as your stem. I don't think it really matters all that much. All right, so let's see how we're gonna do this. So that one has to go there. And it may be that we're not even going to do quite as many this time because we may just have three because we've got this boo on the other side. I suppose we could stick one hanging off like that or we can just leave them like that. What do you guys think? I guess we don't really need that anymore. Hmm. I think I might just leave it at those three. So let's stick this one down with a dimensional first. And you want to don't, you know, you want to keep the dimensional kind of here in the middle because you want it to be able to catch that side. So you kind of have to push it up against it like that. And just know that the dimensional can't go over that line right there. I mean that opening so that it'll let me move those so you can see. See how it can catch underneath here like that. And then I do I really want to use this little shiny one so we can put them like that, like that. Um I could put them down. Let's try that. I like that one. You guys talk to yourselves when you um, when you craft, or is it just me? I noticed in my class this last week that there were several people that um, that were talking to themselves the entire time they were crafting. I just thought that was so funny. So. I think most of us probably craft alone. So nobody even knows that we spend the whole time going, oh, what should I do here? Should I move this up? Should I, you know, kind of asking ourselves questions. All right. So now we have two different cards here. Remember we are always saying that there's no no mistakes in crafting, they're just opportunities. Oops, let's get some of our pretty um, pumpkin pie rhinestones here. So we'll put one down here, and a couple up here, because every card needs a little bit of bling. I think that's too much in a line, so let's see if we can Pull this out. Maybe we put it up here instead. There we go. 
whoops, or maybe we just stick it to ourselves. I didn't want them to look like they were in a line all going down that way. All right, so let me bring in the other one and you can see how it looks and opens a little bit differently than the other on the one that we just made. But both of them are really, really cute. I don't know which one I like better. I actually kind of like this one has less pumpkins. Um, so there's a little bit more open space. So I may actually like better our one that was a little happy mistake. So there we go. <laughs> you said always to what, Megan? To the fact that we are talking to ourselves all the time. Oh, Tammy does too. The dog thinks I'm talking to her. Oh, you guys are funny. So this one is the one we just made, opens like that. And this one opens the opposite way. So you can see it actually really doesn't matter. You can open them whichever way makes you happy. So I'm gonna put you guys back up. So hopefully you learned a little bit about the pick of the patch, but also this um, sketched pla plaid. Um, don't forget this, this uh, really cool large stamp. It may make another presentation on a um, holiday card this year. I'm thinking with, you know, different color um, lines, but they're great for backgrounds. A lot of these ones are really made for backgrounds and, and when you don't feel like embossing or for me, this case was, wow, I don't want to use, I was going to use the autumn paper, but you guys can't buy it now. So I thought, let's make something else. So here we go. All right. So I will be back at one o'clock Pacific time next Monday and I will see you then and um, give me a couple hours and all the directions and such will be on my blog, which is stampwithdrrobin.blogspot.com or you can rewatch this if you'd like to, um, either on Facebook or Stamp with Dr. Robin on my YouTube channel if you haven't found that yet. So take care everybody, have a good week, bye.